Hi, welcome to Sunday School. My name is Maggie, and we're going to get ready for our lesson for today. But before we do, we always like to pray. So let's bow our heads. Father, we come to you, Lord, thanking you for this day. Father, we ask you that you open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to receive what it is, God, that you have for us through this lesson today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, today our lesson is in the book of Revelation. That's where we are. I know not last week you talked about prayer, but the week before, Miss Melody shared about the seven churches. And in the seven churches, you had two who were strong, you had two that was weak, and then you had three that were sinful. And she asked, what type of church would we like to be? Well, we want to be a strong church. We want to be a church who knows the word of God, who stands on the word of God, and know that Jesus is Lord. So, today, we're going to talk about the Great Tribulation. And I'm asking, have you all heard of the word rapture? Well, did you know that the word rapture is not in the Bible? The word rapture does not appear in the Bible. It is used to describe the event, though. Like the return of Christ, and no one knows when the rapture will happen. I want to show you something in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and reading on down, how um, the Lord showed a vision to John. So, the book unveils some future activities soon to occur in the life of Jesus Christ. God permitted him to reveal these things to his servant John in a vision and then an angel was sent from heaven to explain the vision's meaning guess what kids john wrote it all down yes he did the words of god and jesus christ and everything that he heard and saw yes so that's what we're going to be talking about today some of the things that he heard and some of the things that he saw okay so, you may ask, well, the rapture. Rapture is a time when all believers in Christ will be taken to be with Jesus. And when this happens, then the great tribulation begins. Yes, and unbelievers will suffer the great tribulation. Well, you may ask, Miss Maggie, why is God going to rapture Christians before the great tribulations? To save them from his wrath. His children has accepted his son, has repented and asked Jesus to be Lord in their life. And so they're not going to suffer the great tribulation. The rapture signals the beginning of the great tribulation and the great tribulation will last seven years, kids. Yes, seven years. So let's talk about some things that John saw and some things that he heard. The first thing that John saw was a white horse. Let me turn it this way. Yes, he saw a white horse. And many believers believe that the white horse represents the Antichrist. Okay? So then guess what else he saw? He saw a red horse. Yes, a red horse. And the red horse represents war and a loss of peace. So you think about the time that we're living in now, kids, with COVID that is um, here at this time, COVID-19, and how people are walking in fear and how fearful people are. Well, you know what? Behind all this drama and human events that we have going on today, we must understand that there is a God who is planning for his church. He is getting us perfect and prepared to inherit the kingdom of God. And so, the third horse that John saw was a black horse. Yes. And the black horse represents famine, starvation, and economic troubles okay so that's what the black horse represents and last but not least the horse that he saw was the pale horse yes 
and the pale horse represented death and hell. So John in his vision saw these things, and there were seven other things that he saw. John heard seven trumpets, and this will be in Revelations 8, chapter 9, chapter 11, chapter 13, and chapter 14, some of the things that we're going to be talking about right now. So, number one, the first trumpet the sound, much of the earth's vegetation will be destroyed. So that's the first sound that he heard. The second sound is one third of the ships and sea creatures will be destroyed. The third sound he heard dun, 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 is one third of the fresh water will be undrinkable. Wow. So then he heard another sound which was the fourth trumpet dun, 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 dun. one third of the sun the moon and the stars will be destroyed okay you say the sun the moon and the stars one third of them will be destroyed then he heard the fifth sound dun, 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 dun. four well five months rather of locusts with scorpion-like singers, they will start attacking um, people. Yes. Wow, you said scorpion-like. Mm. I don't want to be bit by anything like that. Then John heard another sound. Dun, 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 dun. Number six, demons will attack and kill one-third of the people on the earth. Whoa. And do you think I want to be around for any of this? Or do you want to be around for any of this? No, I don't think so. So he heard another sound. The final. Da, 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 and that was the announcement that the kingdoms of the world belong to the Lord. Amen. So during the great tribulation, kids, those left behind on the earth, will suffer greatly a leader called the antichrist he is the one that's going to be ruling and causing people all over the world to face famine sadness torture poverty destruction pain and ultimately death yes but one good thing for those who accepted christ if you are a christian you will go to heaven during the rapture and you will get to avoid all these terrible things. And one thing you can do is, for those that you know that are not saved, your friends, you can share Christ with them. This would be a good time for you to let them know that the things that are going to occur so that they can be aware and they can make that decision before that time happens. Because kids, we don't know when it's going to happen. The rapture is going to happen suddenly. And everyone is going to be able to see Jesus when he comes down on his cloud. It's not going to be like somebody over here is going to say, well, he's in China. Or he's over here in Israel. Or he's just over here in the United States. No, we're going to be able to see him at the same time. And we also know through the word that those who are dead in Christ shall rise first, right? That's what the word says. And then all of those who are left on this earth that are his children will be caught up with him. And so that's one good thing that we um, can stand on. But if you're not a Christian or you're not certain, certain that you're a Christian and that you're ready if Jesus returns back today, then you can ask him to forgive you and save you now. And it's so easy to do. All you have to do is first admit that you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone disobeys God. And disobedience is sin. So the next step that you have to do is just believe in Jesus. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his one and only son, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, God hates sin, but he loves each of us. Even though we all sin, he still loves us. He loves us so much that he gave Jesus, his son, to die and take the punishment for our sins. So, if you're not sure that you're a Christian, if you're unsure whether you will be caught up in the rapture when Jesus returns, then I ask that you um, receive this prayer and repeat it after me, okay? Say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have disobeyed you. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and life. Help me to love and follow you. And thank you for the gift of salvation. Amen. If you said this prayer, I believe you got born again. Because the Bible says all who call upon the Lord shall be saved. Now what you need to do is confess that Jesus is your Lord. Because Romans 10, 9 says, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. You know, kids, asking Jesus into your heart is the start of a new life. A life where Jesus is your leader and he's your Lord. He will never leave you alone. Because his word says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, I thank you for today and learning about the Great Tribulation. Remember, rapture means that all believers will be taken to heaven with Jesus. And those who are not saved will be left here to go through the Great Tribulation. So, I wanted to use this as an analogy. So, I have a bag of popcorn here, right? So, the bag represents the world. The popcorn here will represent the believers. Mm. This popcorn is really good. Mm -hmm. But there are always kernels, sometimes in a bag, that's not, that does not get popped. And those will represent the unbelievers. The unpopped kernels, do you eat those? I don't. They're too hard for my teeth. But a lot of times, they are not eaten. Guess what happens? We leave them in the bag, and we fold them up, and we throw them away. Well, people whose hearts have not been changed by repentance and faith in Jesus, they will be left behind when the rapture occurs. So remember, you want to be one of these. You want to be one who has repented and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, right? Amen. So that you won't have to be left here during the Great Tribulation and suffer all the things that they're going to have to suffer. Unbelievers are going to have to suffer. So, let's go ahead and end our lesson for today with prayer. Father, we come to you, Lord, thanking you. Thanking you, Lord, that we are a child of God and, Lord, that we are going to be um, raptured up and not left here to go through the great tribulation. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those who have given their lives to, the, to you today, Lord. Father, may their light so shine that men may see their good works, even as young as they are, and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So, Father, we thank you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, guys, and I'm excited about our next lesson that we're going to be talking about. And just giving you a um, little snippet. It's about two kinds of people. And they are believers and unbelievers. All right. Well, you have a great day. Bye.